In today's episode, we have something very special again. The last episode was with my daughter, Laura, and I got lots of good feedback about that one. Now, in this podcast, something kind of similar, but this time the guest is my brother, who has been on the podcast before, who was known as Retro Rob, so let's stay with that. And today I take you on a bike ride that I did with my brother, Retro Rob, where we cycled from our hometown Chelmsford to London, which is about 60 to 70 kilometres. Now, I did actually record a podcast with Retro Rob before we left with the decent microphone at my house at about seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, but that podcast got deleted. But there wasn't very much on it anyway. All you need to know is that my brother Retro Rob is a real cyclist. I cycle around the city, the city where I live and also in London, but I take my bike on the train. I do not cycle to London, but I cycle in London. Whilst my brother is one of those real cyclists, you know, the ones that wear all the gear. By gear, I mean clothes. Lycras, they are known as. That's what I call them anyway. And I must admit, I really don't like them, especially when men wear them. Because if you look at a man's private parts, in my opinion, you can see too much. So all you missed on the first podcast that we recorded was me asking my brother if he was wearing pants. Remember, pants in the UK means underwear. And his answer was no, because apparently when you wear these cycling lycras, or I think he called them bib pants... I can't quite remember. But he said, when you wear these things, you do not wear underwear. In fact, a few days before, he said to me, buy one of these. And the first thing I said was, if I wear that thing, will I be able to wear my pants, my underwear? And he said, no. So then I said, absolutely not. I am not leaving the house without any underwear. I'm a 39 year old man, for Christ's sake. Call me old fashioned, but I like to wear underwear. And if I'm wearing shoes, I wear socks. Not like the young people these days, they wear shoes with no socks. I like a nice pair of socks and a nice pair of underwear. So I refused his offer. So I was wearing standard shorts and t-shirt whilst my brother was wearing his skin tight lycras and very strange cycling shoes. And to be honest, I wasn't sure who looked like the idiot. And I must admit, as you will hear at various points of the day, I looked like the idiot and at various points of the day, he looked like the idiot. The other thing you missed was me expressing how worried I was about the whole thing because I honestly thought I might die. As I do cycle regularly, but not long distances. I cycle like five kilometres maximum, maybe then later in the day, another five kilometres. But before this day, I had never in my life cycled such a long distance and I was worried how my body would react. Anyway, it was 7.30 in the morning on Saturday and we were getting ready to start our journey. So I am going to bring you on that journey with us. It starts with my brother using his cycling gadget, which tells you the best way to go, because obviously we didn't want to take the busy roads. We wanted to take the roads made for cyclists. And this is him programming the route and also a noise you will probably hear throughout the podcast because it kept making noises. My brother then used his super tech gadget, which works out the best cycling route. Then we closed the door and we were off. But my pre-cycle nerves still hadn't gone away and I was actually quite worried that maybe I might die. I actually can't believe this is happening. (laughs) I'm surprised you stuck with it. (laughs) Did you hear that? I'm surprised you stuck with it. So to stick with something, to continue to do something you already said you were going to do. So we were on our way, but I was still extremely worried about the journey ahead. And I think this is a great life lesson because if you look immediately at the top of the mountain, it seems too high. So if you set yourself small targets, it's much easier because starting this cycle journey, I was honestly really, really scared. And I really, really struggled at the beginning of the bike ride, at least for the first 30 minutes. I was just thinking, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this, as you'll see here. We're about five minutes in and I'm already thinking, God, not even five minutes, I'll be two. Although the fear of the journey ahead had kind of left me, the shock horror at my brother's very revealing clothes still hadn't left me. 
They look like you're going bowling with those shoes on. Well, that's why I didn't really want to hang out in the pubs. I don't, I'll go for a pipe. I'm not going on a bar crawl. So if you are not familiar with cyclist shoes, which I must admit I wasn't until recently, they are absolutely ridiculous. Just like the cyclist outfit. Now just imagine going to a pub dressed as a cyclist, but more on that later. So it was actually 7.30 in the morning, but obviously I didn't want to wear many clothes, so I was just wearing shorts and t-shirt. But anyone that has lived in the UK knows that 7.30 in the morning, even in July, is actually a bit cold. You're not cold? No. Even with no pants on? Oh well, like, I'm toasty. Another great word there, toasty, so warm. So yes, you can still be warm even with no pants on, apparently. I think it's also important to note here that my brother and I are very polite cyclists. I know cyclists can get on a lot of people's nerves, but here is proof we are polite cyclists. You'll have to use your bell because I ain't got one in these sort of places. Thanks. Thanks. So that was people in the cycle lane who we politely asked to move, and once they did, we both said a lovely thank you. The world doesn't have to be a horrible place, does it? And again, you will see another fantastic example of that later. So we were cycling along, but there were a few dangers. Oh, nearly got killed by a dog there. So yes, dogs always do try to kill me when I'm on a bike. But luckily we were soon on bigger roads and there were no dogs, but my brother was still doing his best to make me feel as scared as possible. Right, this gets really fast and it goes tight left. Just don't take it too fast. <laughs> Fucking hell. So I'm sure he was actually trying to help me there, but when someone says this bit goes really fast, don't go fast, it is actually also quite scary. Now, obviously before we left, I wanted to be hydrated, so I drank a lot of water, but as you can imagine, that comes with a slight problem. I don't need a piss already. Oh, well, we can stop up here in a bit if you want. Maybe best best to do here. Uh, yeah, we just there's a house there, so we just go around the corner. All right. As I said, we are respectable cyclists, so we don't do it in front of people's houses. But obviously, when you're on these big country roads, unfortunately, when nature calls, you have to do the only thing, which is find a bush. And I must admit, it was a nice experience because I hadn't done that in a bush for a very long time. But I was also quite worried about my brother having to go to the toilet and about what I might see. Not looking forward to seeing you do a piss. But just to be safe, when my brother did his business, I looked in the other direction. So at this point, I had asked my brother how much longer we had left. Like a child in the car, how much longer till we get there? How much longer? Fucking hell. <laughs> just three hours to go. But I think it was at this point where I truly let my fears go. And this is where things got serious. And we hit a few hills, which obviously are a cyclist's nightmare, especially for someone like me who is not used to cycling on these big hills, because I generally cycle in cities. Fucking hell. First real hill. <sighs> oh, Lord. But luckily, Retro Rob's super technological gadget chose roads where there weren't very many hills. So that was one of very few. And I must admit, after this, I came into my own, which means to be successful at something. So then I didn't really have any difficulties and just kept cycling and cycling until we arrived in London. So we're currently directly under the London Eye, which is the big wheel. So we were at the London Eye standing right next to the River Thames and we had officially achieved our goal of arriving in London. So we made it. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, we have so far covered 42.79 miles to get here. For how many? 42. 42 miles. 42 miles. So I just checked and 42.79 miles is exactly 68.86 kilometers. Now, you may have noticed I was quite surprised when he said 42 miles because I actually felt quite good and found it much easier than I thought I had. Again, life lesson. We always worry about things and make it more difficult than it actually is. But this, in some ways, was only the beginning of the journey, as you'll hear more about later. But something very strange happened in this conversation. My brother gave me a compliment. You did fairly well, to be fair. I don't know 
if we broke any records getting here. Yeah, it's uh, all about enjoying the ride, wasn't it? Some bro brotherly bonding. Yeah. So yes, as he said, I didn't break any records for speed, but that wasn't my plan. My plan was basically to survive, which luckily I managed to do. But this also gave us an opportunity to talk because obviously on the bikes, you can't really talk that much. So here I share the highlight of our bike ride to London. Um, highlight still has to be you giving the middle finger to that car. <laughs> he was a knob. And to be fair, the car, as my brother said, was a knob. But anyway, this was the moment, my favourite moment, when obviously we were exploring London. In this next clip, you will hear us having a conversation about where to go to the toilet, but you will also hear Big Ben chiming, doom, doom, because it was now exactly 11 o'clock in the morning. But because obviously you can hear Big Ben and there was an Italian tourist guide talking very close to us, it's very difficult to hear what we say. So... As mentioned, we were talking about where to go to the toilet and I mentioned to my brother that I knew a toilet in St. James's Park, which is the Royal Park outside Buckingham Palace, where you can go to the toilet, but guess what? They make you pay 20p. And yes, they do take credit card. But again, more on that later. And you've got to pay 20p, but they take, do contactless with your phone. I was going to say, because I ain't got any cash on me. Yeah, obviously no one does. When I saw it, I was like, oh God, but then I saw it's contactless. For 20p. Right, which way are we going? Down here. Well, we're going straight on. on the hour, look. So you may notice that the noise has increased a lot because obviously there's so much going on in London. But as mentioned, we were going around all of the most famous sites on our bikes. This is number 10, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, Downing Street. And obviously, London is always so beautiful, as you'll hear here. It's Trafalgar Square now. It's at Nelson's Column. Okay. A load of horseshit. Yeah. Lovely. And then it was on to the Mall, which is the road which connects Trafalgar Square and goes straight down to Buckingham Palace. A strange word, because the spelling would tell you it is actually pronounced Mall. But I've just checked the pronunciation, and apparently the official way is the Mall. And let me tell you, going down there on a bike is a bloody great experience. Oh yes, baby. Here we go. So good you have to FaceTime your wife. Hello. Hello. We're on the mall. So we went and saw Buckingham Palace and then something amazing happened. We were cycling back again along the mall. And you know those guards that are famous in England that wear red and they wear those really ridiculous hats? Well, we saw one just walking down the street, which was strange because they don't really do that and neither of us had seen it before. So this is the moment where we were just cycling along and to the left of us was one of those crazy guards. Can you take a picture with one of those blokes? That's one of the real guards. I might stop and ask him for a picture. I don't think he's going to stop. You don't think so? I've never seen one just wandering around. No, me neither. Now, I thought this opportunity to talk to one of those royal guards on Rock and Roll English was too good to say no to, so I thought, fuck it, I am going to talk to him. Hold this bike, I'm going to try and talk to him. <laughs> good luck. And this is how it went. Just notice when you listen to this, the sound of his footsteps. So he was off duty, so he wasn't doing the usual thing of standing still, but he's got a really loud walk. Uh, excuse me, are we allowed to take a photo with you? Is that possible? No, not allowed to take photos, I'm afraid. You're not allowed? No. Can I just ask you how comfortable it is wearing that hat? Um, I've worn pretty more comfortable hats. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's not too bad. All right, all right. Thanks anyway. <laughs> I said to him, he said, he was very nice. He, uh, this is not allowed. He said, no, I'm not allowed. Um, I guess if we stop to one, like millions, of you're never going anywhere, Yeah, probably. They? And then uh, I said, <laughs> how is it wearing that hat? He said, I've worn more comfortable hats. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good lad. C 
see what I mean about his loud walk. But this for me was the highlight of the day. As this poor man was walking along in his very uncomfortable uniform. When I actually spoke to him, his face was dripping with sweat. He got approached by a very annoying person like me asking for a photo. He could have ignored me or been rude to me. That was kind of what I was expecting, but he declined in such a lovely way. I almost wanted to hug him. And then he threw in a nice joke and it just made me think, you know what, the world is not such a bad place. And in case you didn't understand what he said, here is me telling my brother what he said, so you'll understand now. <laughs> I said to him, he said, he was very nice. He, uh, this is not allowed. He said, no, I'm not allowed. Um, I guess if we stop to one, like millions, of you're never going anywhere. Yeah, probably. There. And then uh, I said, <laughs> how is it wearing that hat? He said, I've worn more comfortable hats. <laughs> So yes, in case you were wondering like me, those guards are real people and they do have a sense of humour. That is something I didn't expect at all because that must be the most boring job in the world. If you ever look at them, they are just standing there and they do not move for hours upon end. A nice expression there to say for a long time, hours upon end. Anyway, after this, we finally went to the toilets, the royal toilets, let's call them, in St. James's Park, which is a royal park. Don't worry, we didn't actually go and use the toilet in Buckingham Palace. Public toilets, which they make you pay 20p for. And because they know no one has money on them these days, they have made them contactless. So you can pay 20p with your card or phone. But sometimes the barriers remain open for a bit longer than usual. So some people, I won't say who, some people avoid paying the 20p. I got a free piss there. You got managed to sneak in. The barriers were up. I thought, fuck it. I'm not paying 20p. So yes, as my brother said, I did manage to sneak in, which is another nice piece of vocabulary, which means to enter somewhere almost secretly so no one can see you or so you can enter without paying 20p because the barriers were up. I had my phone ready to pay, but if you give me the chance to not pay 20p to go to the toilet, I am going to take it. So yes, if they want to arrest me for not paying to go to the toilet, let them do it. Anyway, obviously we didn't go to the toilet together. That would be weird anyway, but we also had the bikes to look after. So we went one at a time. And I was obviously interested in Retro Rob's toilet experience. Um, how was your piss with those things? Did you have to like get naked in front no, of I just, everyone? I pulled them down. There's enough flex in them. Pulled them down. So that is confirmation. You don't need to get naked to go to the toilet if you are wearing cycling lycras. I know you were asking yourself. Anyway, this was also another highlight of the day for me because I had my first snack. Older listeners of the podcast may remember PTTJ. He also is really into cycling and I spoke to him before and asked him what I should bring as a snack and he told me a sugary drink and a snack with lots of carbs carbohydrate so I had this kind of cereal bar thing which after cycling so far was absolutely delicious oh, very good though oh, well good I honestly think that was the best snack I've ever had in my life and I'll be honest with you I don't think I'm ever going to forget that snack well, honestly that was so good that thing so after my amazing snack and toilet break and the fact that it was still only more or less 11 o'clock in the morning, I kind of thought, I want more of this. It was almost too easy. So we continued our journey to Richmond Park, which, if you don't know, is about another 20 kilometres from central London. And remember, we had already cycled about 70. Anyway, we got back on our bikes and started the next part of the journey to Richmond Park, which started with some nice brotherly squabbling, which is a nice word for arguments. You fucking nearly killed that woman. I did not. I was nowhere near her. Fucking nearly hit her. No, I didn't. Am I, am I missing something? What, what have you not? I still feel like I'm missing something. Well, you've got your, have you got your phone? Yeah. Got your water bottle? Notice there, water bottle. The reason I'm pointing this out is not to try and make my brother look stupid because in the UK, if you say bottle of water, or in this case, water bottle, it's not considered the nicest thing in the world. But the reality is most people do it, especially in the South. It's a really common thing. I always do it. If I'm making the podcast, I often try not to so I can be clearer. 
But when I'm in a relaxed environment with my friends and with my brother, 100% of the time, I will say bottle of water. It's not just a stupid thing you see on TikTok. It is reality. But obviously, like my brother, if I were in a job interview, I wouldn't say it like that. And I'm sure he wouldn't either. But day to day life, that is what people say. Well, you've got your, have you got your phone? Yeah. You've got your water bottle. It's weird not having anything in my pockets and stuff. Yeah, no, it does feel a bit weird. It's always, as soon as I leave the house, I always think, have I got wallet, phone and keys? If, I, if, I, if I've got those three things, I can survive. Anyway, that now concludes part one of the journey, which was to central London. Part two is going to continue tomorrow in the Rock and Roll English family members area, where we cycle to Richmond Park. We also get stuck in the rain. I have my very low moment of the day where tiredness really started to kick in. And then we finish with a trip to the pub for some well-deserved beers and a few conversations in the pub. So if you are interested in listening, remember to click the link inside the podcast you are listening to right now and then you can become a member and you will also get access to more than 1,000 extra Rock and Roll English family membership episodes. Anyway, I will see you very soon. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.